I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them. Diablo 4 has positioned Lilith, Queen of the Succubi, as the main villain of the game, at least at launch. Inevitably, fans have then begun to question, where are the great evils, Bale? Diablo and Mephisto, as we've already seen a confirmed return of Andariel and Duriel. The more breadcrumbs bequeathed by Blizzard, the more it becomes evident that Diablo 4's entire plot is directly drawn from Diablo 2. But if that's the case, how? And why will this explain in detail how Lilith will summon the prime evils back to the mortal plane? And perhaps more importantly, what is the evidence that this may occur? You think me mad, old friend, but I know these dreams. They tell of the future. Hell is coming, brother. Hell is coming. I first want to acknowledge developers taking inspiration from their previous titles is nothing new and of course welcomed. From Warcraft 3's story of Arthas' fall and the story's continuation in Wrath of the Lich King makes total sense, it's a natural story progression. However. Other titles like Fallout 4's story following synths has been criticized by some fans as an elaborate extrapolation of a single quest in Fallout 3 titled The Replicated Man. The plot of Diablo 4 seems to fall into the latter's category. In this video, I'm going to explore how the storyline seems to mirror something from Diablo 2 called the Pandemonium Event, which was a Battle.net only event for players and the event culminates in a showdown with Pandemonium Diablo. Further cementing the parallels this Pandemonium event had was that this was also Lilith's first official appearance in the game. Although she used the exact same model as Andariel, except a black reskin, I'm going to assume that was for expediency's sake and to save resources. Plus, back then, Lilith was supposed to be Andariel's mother. And I gotta say, Andariel does seem to look way more succubus than Lilith. However, although technically non-canon, Lilith's introduction into the fray and the primeval's return was further legitimized with an official backstory still accessible on Blizzard's site, which reads, Lilith, the queen of the succubi and matron of all demons, masterminded the revival of Diablo by manifesting herself in the mortal realm and performing a ritual of dark summoning. This ritual, long thought to be impossible by the most powerful mortal wizards, allowed Lilith to link with Diablo across realms, strengthening him until he was finally able to once again reincarnate himself in the mortal plane. Rage and a deep yearning for revenge boiled within the eyes of the Lord of Terror, and together he and Lilith resurrected the two remaining prime evils as well as Duriel and Iswal, two of their strongest agents. Diablo announced his grand plan. The three were finally strong enough to spread pandemonium throughout Sanctuary. Lilith could have easily conducted an assault on her own, but because she'd been left severely weakened by the dark summoning ritual, she agreed to aid the prime evils and command some of their remaining forces. Lilith represents that demonic half that we all have inside our hearts. So she represents a link to an even greater threat, the greater evils. Even though she, she was summoned for reasons we were not ready to divulge quite yet, we know it can't be good. Although this sounds familiar, why do I believe that Diablo 4 specifically is going to mirror this now non-canon event made for Battle.net? Well, Here's what we officially know about Diablo 4's plot from Blizzard themselves that just so happens to follow a similar path. Lilith, Queen of the Succubi, has been returned from the Void by a mysterious summoner and may be at least partially vulnerable or weakened in her reborn state for a time. The Daughter of Hatred is free to run amok on Sanctuary undisturbed as the greater evils were vanquished and are yet to be returned or summoned post-Reaper of Souls. Notably, two lesser evils, the twins Duriel and Andariel, are established as having returned already 
on Sanctuary. The main confirmed antagonists to aid Lilith is called a cult of personality that Lilith has cultivated herself to execute mass sacrifices. Also confirmed is that this cult of personality is familiar because it's an offshoot or directly linked with the Triune cult who worshipped directly Diablo. Bale and Mephisto. Logically, the Triune would again be first and foremost loyal to the Primes and therefore hellbent in resurrecting the Three. As seen by developer artwork officially labeled the Triune, the outfits on the Triune cult directly match the Cult of Personality's aesthetics. Therefore, the Cult of Personality is either an offshoot or is actually the Triune itself, and the Cult of Personality is just a new moniker to distance itself from the Triune for the people of Sanctuary in name alone, or due to the developers not wanting to push the Diablo Returns narrative just yet. The three primevals have also been linked in official art that is somehow linked to the cultists and the many sacrifices. Tying everything together is blood and sacrifice seems to be the key. So that's what we know of the plot thus far. Although disjointed, it paints a vivid picture of Lilith spreading hate and sowing distrust on Sanctuary for a purpose. Also prevalent is the theme of sacrifice and blood, which I will touch on soon. But what we have is a completely plausible story of the pandemonium events returning if we construct all the relevant pieces of information the developers have imparted. Granted, there are a few discrepancies, but these can easily be addressed. The first is the Duriel and Iswal summoning. Although I won't immediately discount Iswal's return, I believe they simply swapped Iswal out with Andariel as she is cemented as a fan favourite and we haven't seen her since D2 versus Iswal's somewhat lacklustre appearance in Diablo 3. Speaking of reincarnation, why is Diablo not returned by his sibling's side? Well, I believe that Blizzard doesn't want to use its draw card too early and give fans a little bit of a breather from the same storyline. It'd be hard to kill Diablo and his brothers and then have other villains come into the franchise as it would make things feel like they were going backwards. MMO especially contain exponentially larger story arcs for what would otherwise be minor encounters in single player experiences. Also, Diablo's return will no doubt be linked to Lilith's efforts in the Pandemonium event, trying to stop her summoning and the tidal wave of blood needed to do so. Addressing the need for blood directly, Tails in his Blood is the Key video on the channel outlines, outside of the many sacrifices we've seen, including the initial summoning of Lilith, which was bound by blood and the mysterious pale man, official artwork that has been released of him has shown him to be further surrounded by hemoglobins in concept art. Blood magic, it seems, is involved in a big way. Also of note is the exploration of the world stone being destroyed and its fragments found to resurrect Diablo as that was a central plot in the upcoming title Diablo Immortal. The World Stone. It was the power of creation and the birth of our eternal conflict. But how does the World Stone and blood tie directly to summoning Diablo, his brothers, and more specifically, Diablo 4? Well, destroying the World Stone at the culmination of Diablo 2 caused shards to fragment and rain all across Sanctuary, and then begin to reawaken the powers of the Nephilim at a very uneven rate. Some heroes would rise in power at a greater rate than others, the same as Aldisian did during the Sin War. These fragments also later resurfaced during Reaper of Souls and were called blood shards of all things. And the description read, some believe they are shards of the world stone. Still, others think them fragments of trapped demon souls, while a few are sure they are crystallized blood of the ancients themselves. 
And while we have speculated in the past that it could very well be all three of these occurrence at once, the fact that these stones are directly tied to the people of Sanctuary is undeniable. How though remains a mystery, but imagine, if you will, that strong bloodlines contain power, and that Lilith's cult could hunt down high value individuals to leverage this power and extract their precious blood as a coveted new currency to summon the primes. Kinda makes you wonder what a mortal angel's blood would be worth. Now, I personally would love to see a whole city be sacrificed like in Full Metal Alchemist to create the coveted Philosopher's Stone, or something equally horrific must be sacrificed to bring back the greater evils. Let's be honest, two treasure hunters and a priest seems pretty cheap to resurrect the Queen of the Succubi. I'm mean, gonna take a wild stab and say a prime evil's worth a little bit more. So we've covered blood and the summoning, but then the motive still has to be addressed. Why would Lilith want her father and uncles back when she can rule unimpeded and they left on poor terms? Well, the answer is simple, to gain their favor. Just as Andariel betrayed the brothers during the Great Exile, she then sided with them in Diablo 2 to curry their favor. Remember, it was Lilith who stole the very world stone in the Eternal Conflict, and then was later banished by the angel Inarius, leaving her on terrible terms with not only the High Heavens, but also the Burning Hells. What better way to get back into the good graces of family than to summon them back from the Abyss and into the mortal realm, especially at a time where the developers have confirmed that Heaven's gates are closed and evil could rule unimpeded. And with Heaven having closed their gates, there's no one to answer our prayers. Even the Horadrim are but mad old men talking to themselves, talking to graves, clutching their bottles as hard as they once clutched their swords. Yeah, we can kind of identify with that, I think. Amen. <laughs>